Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, we are discussing about uh, the particulate matter uh, separation by uh, different techniques. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we will try to learn something about uh, the how to separate that particulate matter by gravity settling chamber. And here, we will discuss that very fine particles whenever it will be suspending in air or open atmosphere or that is coming out from that uh, you know industry as an effluent from the chimney or outlet of that you know particular process unit. So, those particulate material those uh, uh, you know have the size uh, very you know fine that means micron size micron in range you can say. So, those particles uh, actually uh, is regarded as pollutant. Okay. So, uh, those pollutant how uh, it can be separated those are uh, actually to be discussed here and uh, there are several methods to separate those particles. I think we have discussed also uh, in the previous lectures that there are several uh, methods are available to uh, you know separate those uh, you know particles. One of the method that we have discussed that the screening method but uh, those uh, you know screening uh, operation is basically applicable for uh, you know coarser particles whereas the fine particles those are suspending in the atmosphere or it is coming out from the outlet of that you know particular process unit in industry. In that case uh, how those solid particles to be separated for them uh, you will see that several techniques like you know that gravity chamber electrostatic precipitator, back filter, even uh, you will say that uh, other you know uh, methods like filter and fresh uh, uh, processes or fresh and plate filter uh, fresh method or membrane technology. Those are actually uh, being used in industry to separate those particles either from air or you can uh, separate it from the uh, you know solution uh, in a uh, you know slurry. Uh, solution of uh, solution or slurry you can say. So, in that case uh, you have to know that uh, what type of materials or what are the what are the size of that materials to be uh, there in that you know slurry or in a solution or in atmosphere. You will see that this particulate matter uh, based on this size those are very fine it is called as pollutant in atmosphere which will be consisting of a mixture of solid and liquid or you can say that uh, solid liquid in mixer. There itself you will see that uh, particles uh, will be of different uh, you know type like some will be inorganic, some will be organics that will be suspended in air or uh, liquid or in a mixer of air and liquid. So, in that case the particulate matters are mainly uh, the products of combustion and uh, aerosols uh, 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 you know uh, nucleation. So, these are the techniques by which that uh, uh, that particulate matters is coming out from the industry like in combustion system in fluidized bed reactor that we are discussing. In industry where that uh, in power plant that uh, uh, burning of coal will produce that steam or uh, you know gaseous product from that gaseous product or steam that uh, uh, power or electricity is generated. So, there when that coal uh, will be burnt there you will see that very fine particulate matters will be coming out that is as a ash you can say also. Uh, those are very fine those uh, you will see that uh, floating or it will be coming out from the outlet uh, they are uh, from the chimney. Those will be going to that you know uh, atmosphere as a carbonaceous particle or some other you know uh, small fine particles there. So, in that case uh, you will see that uh, those particles to be you know segregated by a certain means. Also you will see that uh, in atmosphere open atmosphere generally you will see that when very you know fine uh, droplet of uh, water that is inorganic substances of that you know droplet it will be you know that suspending in the air or very fine particles which will be suspending in the air that will be called as aerosols. So, that aerosols also uh, it will be formed by nucleation uh, and it will be you know uh, suspending in the atmosphere. 
So, from the combustion and also that aerosol nucleation whenever particulate matter it will be coming out to the open atmosphere you will see that those particles to be you know separated. So, in industrial sector uh, they are you will see that they are responsible to separate all those particles otherwise those particles if we uh, inhale you will see that uh, all those particles will be coming to the our lungs and then uh, it will be harmful for our breathing system and also other diseases will you know generated there. So, in that case uh, those to be you know separated and you will see that uh, generally in atmosphere there are very uh, fine particles generally uh, around 2.5 micron uh, in size. So, it will be regarded or uh, you know uh, called as that particulate matter 2.5 it is denoted by you know uh, this p m 2.5 that means here particulate matter of size around 2.5 micrometer ok. And the aerosol commonly refers to the particulate or air mixer there. So, uh, those also uh, are very uh, harmful uh, for our health. So, those to be also segregated or separated by different means. Now, uh, in this case what are the basic principle to remove all those particulate matter? So, uh, in that case there are different types of devices are basically uh, designed based on particulate principle uh, basically on the principle that a gas stream which uh, actually contains that particles uh, are very fine in size that will be passed through a region where the particles are acted on by a external force and hence uh, because of that driving force by that external force uh, the, the particles uh, will be separated from that you know mixer of that uh, air stream that contains that particulate matter. So, basically a design uh, of a device that will be you know done for that separation of particulate materials where that external force will be applied to pass that you know particle laden air stream through that you know equipment and whenever it will pass through that equipment there will be a certain you know governing you know mechanism based on which that particulate matter can be separated from the you know particle laden stream. So, that mechanism either may be you know based on that particle size either may be based on that you know uh, uh, characteristics of the particle like uh, the properties of the particle either uh, it will be that uh, magnetic in nature or you know that ionic in nature or uh, other you know uh, properties will have that materials or not or you can make this particle particulate material uh, you know into a certain you know property oriented material so that those property oriented materials can be segregated from that air stream. So, these are the mechanism basic mechanism you will see that based on that mechanism there are several you know equipment or devices uh, are you know designed to separate those particles. So, when uh, that acted upon by external forces on these particles you will see that the particles uh, acquire a velocity component they are inside the equipment that will be in a particular direction that will be different from that of a gas stream. So, whenever the particle laden gas will be passed through that equipment the particles you know will acquire a certain you know velocity component by that external force in the direction that will be different from that you know main stream of the particle laden gas stream or you know other stream. So, in this way that particles can be separated. Now, to you know get this velocity component by that external force. So, this is one mechanism. Another mechanism to you know change the direction of the particle materials based on that size that is by gravity force. Also, the direction of that particulate material can be changed by its property like you know that if it is it is ionic then you will see that some provision will be made if it is anionic then some you know cathode or anode you know electrode will be you know you know placed or devised in such a way that those you know negative 
ion particles should be going to the you know cathode like positive ion electrode whereas negative ion based you know particles will go to the you know uh, you know that uh, in the positive electrode. So, in this way you will see that uh, there will be a you know change of direction of that particles from the main stream based on their property as well as this you know gravitational force or particle size or other external forces. So, in order to design a separation device based on particulate separation by external forces one must be able to compute the motion of a particle under such circumstances. So, this is the you know principle of that particulate material removal. Now, in this case you have to remember some important points for design of that you know equipment which is called that emission control system. You will see that design of a particulate emission control system is generally based on knowledge of four you know of, uh, items like that you know particulate concentration is one of the component of that uh, in the stream which is to be cleaned and also the gas flow rate this is very important and the size distribution of the particles which is to be removed and the final allowable particulate emission rate. So, these are the four you know components which is to be you know considered for you know design of that emission control system. Also other than these points of course, you will see that total cost of the construction, size of the collector, operational factors to be also considered. Now, what are those total cost of construction? You will see that a uh, total cost of construction actually depending on the volumetric flow rate of the gas which is to be cleaned. So, it is directly proportional to the volumetric flow rate of the gas. Also size of the collector, it is also directly proportional to the volumetric flow rate of the gas which is to be cleaned. And other operational factors like what will be the pressure drop of that equipment whenever it will be operated what will be the power consumption, what is the power required for that, that will come from that you know frictional pressure resistance which is you know exhibited by that equipment when it will be run. And then you will see that other important points that you have to remember that quantity of liquid which is needed either liquid or gas stream, you will see that it is basically special cases for the wet scrubbing system, you will see that in some cases you will see that uh, some particulate materials to be you know separated from the open atmosphere just by flowing it through a you know dispersed phase of droplet. That means, uh, from one position that liquid will be spread, that liquid will be in such a such compound in uh, that uh, which will be you know having that adsorption you know capability of those particulate materials. So, that you know liquid as a solvent to be spread inside a uh, you know a device uh, where you will see that particulate uh, laden gas stream to be you know passed through that you know uh, devices counter currently. So, that whenever that droplet of that solvent will come into contact with that particle laden you know gaseous uh, you know stream, those particulate materials will try to attach on the surface of the solvent droplet or liquid droplet on which it will be you know adsorbed or attached. So, in this way that you know particulate matter can be separated. So, for that you have to know how much amount or what will be the flow rate of that you know liquid which will be spread as a droplet you know for that scrub, scrubbing system. So, these are the operational factors. Okay. So, main factor that total cost of the construction which will be actually affecting which will be affected by you know volumetric flow rate of the gas or liquid 
and also uh, you will see that pressure drop also that what of the power consumption for that operation. So, these all are to be you know considered for the design of emission control system for separation of the particulate material. Now, we are talking about that different mechanism by which that you know particulate matter to be separated by that special devices which is actually designed based on that principle of that particular matter movement or the properties of the particle or you can say that other driving forces on the particulate matter. So, in that case one mechanism it is called sedimentation. Here in this case the devices which are being designed you know to separate those particulate materials from the gas stream rely on one or more of the following physical mechanism. One is called sedimentation, another is called uh, you will see that uh, electrostatic uh, or you know that it is called electrostatic precipitator, you will see that membrane separator, you will see that uh, there will be you know uh, it is called uh, that uh, also it is called uh, uh, leaf filter uh, process, also you can say that it will be you know that. Uh, another uh, special design that of you know uh, uh, magnetic uh, you know uh, induction of uh, precipitator like that. So, there are different mechanism uh, mainly you know that four mechanisms are there sedimentation then migration of charged particles in an electric field and then inertial deposition and then also Brownian diffu diffusion. So, these are main you know broad classification of uh, you know that uh, mechanism of that uh, separation of that particulate matter. So, in this case uh, first of all we will say that sedimentation this is basically that uh, particles containing gas streams uh, is introduced into a device or chamber where the particles settled under gravity to the floor of the chamber and devices of this type are called settling chambers. We will come to that point in details of that settling chambers. And then another mechanism it is called the migration of charged particles in an electric field. In this case that particle laden gas stream is uh, introduced into a device in which the particles are charged and then subjected to an electric field. In this case that you know resulting electrostatic force on the particles you know causes them to migrate to one of the surfaces of the device where they are held and collected. So, in this case you will see that whenever particle laden gas stream to be passed to the devices those particles will be you know ionized first. After that those ionized particles it will be you know change its direction to the anode or cathode which is actually made a provision just by in presence of electric field. So, because of that you will see that the ionized particles to be you know uh, you know uh, shifted to that you know cathode or anon based on that you know what type of you know ionic you know particles to be produced. So, this is the main mechanism. So, it is called that migration of charged particles in an electric field this is one mechanism and this type of uh, you know devices are called electrostatic precipitators. Then third one is called inertial deposition. In this case you will see that that particle laden gas stream change you know uh, that change the direction as it flows around an object in its path. So, in its path there will be some object which will be changing its direction and there you will see that suspended particles tend to keep moving in their original direction due to their inertia. So, particle laden gas it will be passed through the devices where you will see there will be some obstruction to be made in front of that or uh, you will see that in the path of that uh, you know particle laden gas. So, whenever that particles will be you know get obstruction or resisted by that you know obstruction mechanical devices or you can say mechanical provision there itself you will see that particles will be you know stopped its you know flow and it will be 
go downward along the side of that you know uh, uh, mechanical provision. Whereas, the gas will not be moving downward that will be you know changes direction you know in other way. So, in this way particles would change its direction in one uh, way and another uh, way that gas would be uh, you know passing away. So, in that case the particulate materials will be collected in the devices based on this principle include like cyclones, scrubbers and filters like that. So, you will see that membrane there you will see that membrane uh, uh, you will see that when that particle laden uh, liquid it will be passed through that you know membrane. Membrane is basically the porous uh, media through which that particle laden liquid or gas will be passed through and they are based on that uh, pore size of that membrane the particulate materials will be you know uh, stacked or it will be separated in one end of this membrane whereas, through that you know a uh, pores the liquid will be passed through. So, based on that particle size and pore size of that membrane particles will retain in one side of the membrane whereas, the liquid will be passing through that membrane. So, in this way that particles will get that you know resistance to flow based on their size and it will be retained in one end other uh, whereas, you know liquid which will be you know passing through that pores and uh, then uh, uh, the separation will happen. So, this is called inertia deposition mechanism. So, in this case we can say that there are several other you know uh, 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 devices are being designed to separate those you know particulate materials from the air stream or uh, liquid stream uh, those are called cyclones, scrubbers and filters like that. Then another mechanism it is called Brownian diffusion. In this case particles suspended in a gas are always in Brownian motion that we know like open atmosphere. When the gas stream flows around obstacles the natural you know random motion of the particles will you know bring them into contact with the obstacles where they adhere and are collected. So, in this case you see that particulate materials will be adhere on the surface of the solid which is made provision to get obstruction of that you know materials onto the surface and then it is attached. So, because we know that that Brownian motion is more pronounced the smaller the particles we expect that devices based on diffusion as the suspension mechanism will be most effective for small particles. So, in this case you know particle size will be very very fine. So, in that case due to their Brownian motion whenever that particles will come in contact with that surfaces on which that particles will be adsorbed or you can say that attached on the surface. So, based on that principles the device will be designed. So, it is called Brownian diffusion based on which that particle materials particulate materials will be separated on the surface. That surface may be that uh, made more effective to attach those particles based on the you know properties of the surface. Now, which surface will have the more tendency to attach those you know particulate materials. So, in that way those uh, you know surface can be you know modified you know either chemically or physically there. So, the key parameter that influences the choice of which device to employ in a particular case is the particle diameter that is dp. So, dp is one of the important criteria based on which you can select what type of device you can use for separation of those you know particle uh, or specific you know particles to separate. So, we are having different you know that uh, type of you know equipment or devices uh, those are commonly used in industry for separation of the particulate material those are called settling or gravity chamber, electrostatic precipitator, cyclone filters, wet scrubbers or devices even in industry some you will see that that will be you know that bag filter or leaf filter it is called. Now, uh, whenever you are going to assess those you know equipment 
by who is that particulate materials to be separated you have to you know know what would be the collection or removal efficiency of the uh, equipment okay so how to assess how to estimate that you have to know so collection efficiency uh, generally denoted by eta which is a function of particle diameter of a device for particles of diameter dp that can be you know defined by this equation this is basically 1 minus number of particles of diameter dp per meter cube of gas out divided by number of particles of diameter dp per meter cube of gas in. So, here the overall efficiency of the device is based on the particle number is defined as 1 minus you know number of particles per meter cube of gas out by number of particles per meter cube of gas in. So, in this way you can say that what would be the overall efficiency can be calculated. Now, if you are having that in the outlet or inlet there will be a certain you know distribution of the particle uh, particulate materials which is coming into the devices and which is also coming out from the devices you will see there will be there will be a you know certain range of particles in that inlet and outlet. So, there will be some distribution of that particulate materials. So, based on that particulate material distribution or size distribution this efficiency also can be expressed in terms of that particle size distribution function at the inlet and outlet sides of the devices. So, this efficiency can be defined based on that you know particle size distribution as like this here. Here it will be that 0 to infinity it is defined as the eta in dp that means here what will be the efficiency of that you know devices at its inlet condition based on that particle size distribution whose function is n i in uh, in dp and uh, minus eta out dp you know into d dp divided by 0 to infinity uh, in i uh, dp d dp. This is uh, it is uh, actually based on that you know uh, you know that efficiency at the inlet and efficiency at the outlet efficiency at the inlet. So, we can write here that 1 minus 0 to infinity eta out dp d dp by 0 to infinity eta in dp d dp. So, this from this equation number 3 you can calculate what will be the efficiency of that you know devices based on that particle size distribution. Now, the definition of overall efficiency above is based on particle number the overall efficiency can be defined based on the other particle properties such as surface area and the volume or mass. For example, the collection efficiency based on the particle mass that is eta m you can say that. So, eta m dp that will be equal to 1 minus mass of particles of diameter dp per meter cube of gas out divided by mass of particles of diameter dp per meter cube of gas in. And then overall efficiency uh, again uh, based on that you know mass of the particles can be expressed by this equation number 5 ok. And then another important point that you have to remember sometimes you know uh, the uh, you know collection efficiency the efficiency of the you know equipment can also be you know uh, referred by other times uh, other other terms like that penetration grade efficiency like this. In this case the term that is sometimes used to express collection efficiency is called the penetration. In this case the penetration based on particle mass is just p m that will be 1 minus eta m and other terms that are used for this uh, you know quantity are the grade efficiency or the fractional uh, you know efficiency and the penetration is based on the amount of emitted rather than captured. Also you have to remember that the penetration can be defined on the basis of particle number also. So, it will be p is equal to 1 minus eta based on that number distribution. 
So, it will be 1 min uh, the particle size at the point uh, here uh, you know uh, eta is equal to 0 0.5 where that efficiency will be 0, 0 0.5 is called the cut size or the cut diameter. So, the particle diameter at which that you can get that you know uh, efficiency of the devices uh, it will be called as cut diameter. So, these terms also you have to remember. Then coming to the uh, point there you know settling or gravity chambers by which you are uh, able to you know separate those particulate materials based on that gravitational force. So, this is basically a very simple and large box through which the effluent gas stream will be passed and uh, you will see that there the particles in the stream will be settled to the floor of that gravity chamber here okay, uh, by gravity action. And uh, here in this case uh, that you will see that whenever that particle uh, laden gas will be coming through this chamber that is large size, the particles will be you know flowing a uh, very laminar condition and during that uh, laminar condition those particles will have that higher gravity will be coming down in this chamber whereas, other particles will flow because of that you know inertia effect and those will be separated in other chamber based on that its particle size. So, if you have that particle size higher it will have that higher gravity whereas, the lower particle size will give you the lower gravity and because of that lower gravity the finer particles relatively finer particles will go ahead compared to that you know its position left uh, leaving the other. Uh, you know bigger size particles uh, and it will be separated based on this. So, in this way this gravity chamber is being used to segregate those particle based on their size and this uh, size will give you the gravity force and based on that gravity force difference those particles will be separated in a different location where you will see there will be certain you know degree of inertia will be applied here. Okay. So, in this case uh, uh, you can separate these particles, but there will be some limitation in this case. In this case the removal of particles larger uh, you know uh, than about 50 microns uh, you know uh, is possible whereas, less than 50 microns it is very tough to you know get this separation. And you will see that uh, Settling chambers uh, also will have some you know advantage here in this case it is very simple construction and low cost and in this case you will have that small pressure drops their energy consumption will be less than the main disadvantage of the settling chamber is that you know large the space is required to separate those particles. And uh, basic idealized flow situations uh, will give you that difference in that operation of this uh, settling chambers. So, the uh, some you know that settling chambers will uh, you know uh, operate uh, based on that laminar flow, some uh, you know settling chamber will operate as a you know plug flow where velocity will be uniform across the cross section uh, where there will be no vertical mixing of that particles inside the chamber and also there will be some uh, you know uh, uh, settling chamber where plug flow with complete vertical mixing of that particles will be there. So, these three category uh, can be you know assessed of those you know settling uh, chamber and based on which that settling chamber uh, is uh, you know working. Uh, if we talk about that laminar flow settling chamber there you will see that the uh, particle you know will be you know flowing you know with a velocity which will have that velocity profile almost parabolic in type. And uh, such a uh, flow would only be realized when that Reynolds number will be below that for transition to turbulent flow. So, in this case of laminar flow 
you will see that the time required for a particle of height y here as shown in the picture uh, above the floor of the chamber uh, to settle it will be as y by u t. So, that means y by u t y is the height of the you know that means chamber. So, what will be the time required for that particle of height y above this floor of this chamber to settle that will be calculated as what is the distance it will be travelled to come to this bottom of this chamber at the velocity u t, u t is basically the terminal velocity of that particle. So, the uh, you know time required to settle down to this bottom of this you know chamber will be equal to y by u t. So, where u t is the particle settling velocity or terminal velocity. Now, in this case how will you calculate the collection efficiency of this you know settling chamber. So, it will be eta d p that is defined by 3 beta by 2 alpha. What is beta? Beta is defined as 2 u t by 3 u bar and alpha is h by l and u t is that means you know terminal velocity at this laminar condition. So, here you will see that this collection efficiency depends on the settling velocity or terminal velocity of the particle which is basically a function of size of the particles and also length of the chamber also what will be the average velocity by which that particles will be you know flowing through the chamber. If you allow that particle laden gas stream at a particular volumetric flow rate then you have to divide that volumetric flow rate by the cross sectional area of this you know settling chamber. Then you will have that average velocity of the flow of that you know particle laden gas stream through the chamber. So, all those parameter will give you that collection efficiency by this definition as given in equation number 6 along with that you know terms which is defined in equation number 7, 8 and 9 respectively. So, here we can have that the terminal velocity, average gas velocity, height of the chamber, length of the chamber, particle density, particle size and viscosity of the gas stream which will affect that collection efficiency. Let us do an example for this here. Consider a settling chamber for which height is 0 0.1 meter and L is equal to 10 meter, length is 10 meter, where the gas stream is flowing with a average velocity 0 0.1 meter per second and you know particle density is given 1 gram per centimeter cube at 298 Kelvin temperature viscosity is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 gram centimeter inverse second inverse. The kinematic viscosity of the air is 0 0.015 centimeter square per second. Under these conditions the Reynolds number for the channel flow is found to be 667.0. You know, so, that the laminar flow conditions will prevail. Now, in this case after substitution of those parameters in the efficiency equation we can have 0 0.03024 dp square here dp is unknown to you. So, this efficiency will be depending on that particle diameter provided that other parameters is known to you and in this case the dp will be in micrometer. So, thus for this particular conditions the collection efficiency will be changing with respect to particle diameter. So, how it can be then calculated if you substitute the value of d p different value of particle size then you will get different efficiency. So, here if you increase the particle size you will see that 
efficiency of the settling chamber will increase. So, that Partic uh, settling chamber will give you the better efficiency if your size of the particles will be higher. Then coming to that another you know condition flow condition of that settling chamber it is called plug flow condition where you will see that there will be no vertical mixing of the particles and the particles will be distributed uniformly across the entrance to the you know chamber. And in that case, the collection efficiency is then just as per that you know laminar condition you can say it will be u t l divided by u bar h almost the same way that you are having in your you know laminar condition. So, the same as that laminar flow settling chamber it will work because in this case the parabolic velocity profile case even though the particle falls across the streamlines with different velocities, the particle are simply falling across the streamlines with the mean velocity of the flow. That is why the plug flow settling chamber will be working as per the principle of laminar flow settling chamber. Then coming to that turbulent flow condition of that settling chamber. In this case, the flow in a rectangular channel like settling chamber can be assumed to be turbulent if the Reynolds number will be greater than 4000. Here Reynolds number will be based on that chamber dimensions, chamber you know uh, hydraulic uh, radius. So, here this Reynolds number is defined as 4 R s u bar rho by mu here R s is basically that uh, you know hydraulic radius where hydraulic radius will be defined as by this equation 12 here R s is equal to h w divided by 2 into h plus w h is the height of the chamber cross section and then width of this chamber is w. Now, if that duct or chamber contains n horizontal plates is space receives a volumetric flow of q by n and has its height of h by n. In this case there will be a uh, negligible effect of plate thickness. In that case the Reynolds number for that flow in each space can be defined by this equation number 13 here that will be the 2 q rho by mu into h plus n w. Here n is the number of horizontal plates. Okay. So, there that chamber inside it there will be a you know number of n number of horizontals you know plates to be placed. So, that you will see that there are n number of you know uh, you know space through which that you know particulate and gas will be you know passing through. So, in that case that average velocity you know it will be divided you know for that is space that will be as q by n and also height also will be divided into its n number of plates that means h by n and then Reynolds number will be defined accordingly. In this case the collection efficiency of a settling chamber of n number of plates for turbulent condition where velocity will be very high. So, in this case you will see that eta d p will be equal to 1 minus n by n 0 here n will be the number of concentration of particles in the diameter range d p plus d d p here here number of particles and the n 0 will be equal to what number of concentration at the entrance to the chamber. So, here this capital N please uh, do not be confused with that capital N in the previous slides we described that is you know number of plates here this N is number of you know concentration of particles here number concentration of particles in the you know chamber based on that diameter range of d p plus d d p and N 0 is the number concentration at the entrance to the chamber. So, uh, based on this we can have 1 minus 
exponent of minus u t l by u bar h. So, one can express this collection efficiency in terms of particle diameter for Stokes flow settling condition there itself then eta d p will be equal to 1 minus exponent of u t you just substitute the value of u t that means settling velocity of the particles there and also what will be the average velocity of that you know uh, particles inside the you know chamber according to that you can have this efficiency of the chamber. So, if you are having that one chamber only then n will be equal to 1 whereas, if you are having number of plates there inside then you have to divide that q by q by n ok and also h should be you know h by n that you have to consider here. So, q is the volumetric flow rate of gas through the chamber and w is the width of the chamber ok. So, in this way you can assess or you can uh, estimate what would be the collection efficiency of the settling chamber. Now, this you will see that this efficiency of that settling chamber based on that three flow conditions either there will be complete mixing with plug flow, vertical mixing with plug flow or no mixing with plug flow. So, in that case how that efficiency of that settling chamber will be changing. Generally you will see that the S shape profile will give you uh, for that you know uh, uh, settling chamber uh, for its efficiency based on this you know parameter here root over u t l by uh, u h there ok. So, uh, this efficiency how it will be changing you will see that in the diagram it is shown that or in this uh, graph it is shown that how uh, that efficiency of that settling chamber will be changing uh, and it will give you that uh, also uh, as a certain degree of mixing how that efficiency will be changing with respect to this parameter. So, once you know this parameter what will be the efficiency you can easily calculate from this graph. Let us do an example based on this you know theory. Now, in this case you have to determine the length of a settling chamber which is required to achieve 90 percent efficiency for 50 micrometer particles of a density 2 gram per centimeter cube from an air stream of 1 meter cube per second at 298 k at 1 atmosphere. The chamber is to be 1 meter wide and 1 meter high. The kinematic viscosity of the air is given 0 0.015 centimeter square per second. So, based on this you have to calculate what would be the length of the settling chamber to require uh, or uh, to achieve this 90 percent efficiency of that equipment for separation of that 50 micrometer particles of density 2 gram per centimeter cube. So, in this case what you have to do first of all you have to calculate that Galileo number. So, this Galileo number will be based on function of Reynolds number and drag coefficient and it is defined like this here it is shown in the slide to be 4 g dp cube rho into rho p minus rho by 3 mu square g is the gravitational acceleration dp is the particle diameter rho is the density of the you know fluid and rho p is the particle diameter and mu is the viscosity of the fluid and it is a function of drag coefficient and Reynolds number square. I think we have discussed this in uh, you know uh, where we have uh, discussed about that settling velocity uh, for multiple uh, multiple particles there. So, in that case uh, you have to calculate first Galileo number and then what is the terminal velocity of that you know particle those also will be coming as a function of that Reynolds number here and then uh, you will see that from the graph of this you know c d into r square versus this Reynolds number you will see this this type of you know graph you can expect for this you know particular problem this profile if you change that you know Reynolds number this Galileo number will be changing ok. 
that means here the C D into R square will be changing with respect to Reynolds number. So, at this 12.1 value from this graph what will be the Reynolds number here it is coming around 1.10 and from this Reynolds number you will be able to calculate what will be the terminal velocity by this equation. So, this terminal velocity is coming 33 centimeter per second. Then from equation number 14 that we have given earlier you have to calculate what will be the length of that chamber. So, for this you have to calculate again from this equation u t you know you have to calculate u bar that means average gas velocity and also what is the efficiency. Efficiency is given to you that is 90 percent, h is given to you and what will be that u bar. Now, from this efficiency that is a equation efficiency you can calculate this you know uh, you know that u bar here. Once you know that u bar you will be able to calculate that you know that w also if it is required or w if it is given then you can easily calculate what will be the q value. So, here you will see that q value is given to you. So, how to calculate u bar? h is given to you, w is given to you. So, u bar easily you can calculate. Once you know that u bar, you will be able to calculate the L from this equation once that eta value is given to you that means efficiency is given to you. So, from this equation you can simplify like this L will, L will be equal to this you know this equation. So, after substitution of this value of u bar h eta and u t you can easily calculate what will be the length of that chamber it is coming 6.98 meter. So, what you have done actually here first of all you have to calculate the Galileo number uh, sorry Galileo number from this Galileo number and from this graph you will be able to calculate what will be the Reynolds number once you know that Reynolds number you will be able to calculate what will be the terminal velocity and also from the given value of q h and w you will be able to calculate average velocity. Once you know that average velocity u bar and u t and also h you will be able to calculate the you know length of this chamber from this efficiency equation. So, finally, it is coming 6.98 I think you understood this problem which is actually uh, you know very useful for understanding this you know relation of you know efficiency of the settling chamber. So, we have discussed here what is the basic principle of separation of particulate materials, what are the different you know mechanisms, what are the you know commonly used devices which are being used in industry to separate those particulate materials and also we have analyzed the you know efficiency of that you know gravity settling chamber on which that it will be working basically in the three working you know or flowing condition it is working and based on which how that efficiency of that settling chamber can be calculated. So, in the next lecture we will also try to understand more about this you know separation of particulate material by other mechanism in a certain devices which is defined or which is designed based on that mechanism it is called cyclone separator. So, we will be discussing about that cyclone separator in the next lecture. So, thank you for giving attention have a nice day.